So welcome everybody to the webinar. So today we're going to be going through scheduling of reports and how to schedule any reports and just looking at how the scheduling works in general in Tiger Prism. So the first thing we're going to look at is how do we schedule a report. So to do this we simply can go to either the reports section or the scheduler tile. So if I start looking at the reports tile you can schedule any of the reports that are available to you. So you can simply select the report that you would like to schedule on the left hand side. Select any of your parameters that you require. So this may be your directory items. So again, in here, you can come and select your directory items. Say I want to run a scheduled report on gold medal and I'd like to see level three and level four. I can select these first and click OK. And I can use any of the parameters that are available on the right hand side here. You may then just want to run a test quickly to make sure that you're going to display the information that you want to receive on your automated report. So if you're happy with the way that the report looks, go ahead now and schedule the report. So to do this, what you then do is click on the schedule button at the top here. Now scheduling the report, take all the parameters that you've previously set here and bring them into the wizard. So the wizard will allow you then to set up the report, choose your parameters and work through the report to make sure that it's configured in the way that you require it to be. So the first screen here will be the report job name. The name can be configured to be whatever you'd like it to be. So in this instance, I will call it webinar test departmental cost summary. I can then specify a job priority. So a job priority means which order do I run the jobs on? So if I have five jobs that run at 1 p.m., it will take any that are high first and run those, then it will run the medium, and then it will run the low. For example, if I have one at high, one at medium, and three at low, it will take the high first, the medium second, and then the three at the low in any order that they may be. So if your report needs to go out, make sure that you can set it to high. If you're not too fussed when it goes out during the day, then you can set it to either medium or low. Please note, if you do set everything to high, then there will be a backlogging reports. So make sure that you only set ones that do have a high priority to high. The emergency only means that this will start up in its own thread and start generating its report by itself. If you have too many of these reports set as emergency only, you could end up putting a lot of pressure on the Tiger server. But if it is something that is critical and must go out all the time, you can use the emergency only. As I said, if you have too many, it may put extra pressure on the Tiger server. You can then give it a description. So in here, the description is just something to describe the report. So you know what this is when you come back to it. So if I say monthly DCS webinar report test, I can look at this and know why I've set this report up later on. Now, this is a wizard. So what you need to do is go from left to right. So you can either click on the arrows here by simply clicking on the arrow. Or you can use the next and back buttons in the top right hand corner here. So I've completed my name section of the wizard. I now need to complete my schedule. So what my schedule is, is how often do I want the report to run? So at this moment in time, forget about how much data is in the report. All this is, is how often do I want my report to run? So I'm going to look at schedule this job to run forever run once, run a specified number of times. So I could say, I only want this to run 12 times before it ends or until a specified date. So let's say that we're running a campaign and we would like the reports to run for the next seven days. You can set an end date here and it will then stop on a specific date. If you want it to keep running forever, leave it on run forever. If the report is for an international site, you may want to set it in their time zone as well. So again, you can offset the time zone by changing the time zone here. 
So when do I want it to first run? So when is my initial execution? So I would like it to run on the 1st of July at midnight. Now, why did I select the 1st of July? So because I've selected the 1st of July, you will now see at the bottom here in my sample of scheduled executions, the job will run on the 1st of July, 1st of August, 1st of September, 1st of October. So let's say a customer has come to you and said, I would like the last five months report sent to me. You could set it up as a scheduled report and backdate it to in the past. And Tiger Prism will then pick up to know that it didn't run it on the 1st of July or the 1st of August or the 1st of September and then automatically generate those reports and email them off to whoever has requested that report. Once you've set its first date, you then get it to specify how often it runs. So it may be every one month, every one week. And by changing this, you'll see that your scheduled executions will start changing to reflect, to say when it's gonna run and when the next ones are gonna run, etc. here at the bottom. It may be every day you want it to run. But again, if I run it for a day, I may not be interested on having the reports come on certain days. So again, I can unselect these report. So I may not want a report on a Saturday and Sunday, okay? And again, your schedule executions will display at the bottom here to reflect how this is going to run. Now, just a note here, you may want to set days of the weeks to run on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, because you'll be looking at the previous day's reports. So if you're running it at midnight, you would want it to run at midnight on Tuesday to show Monday's calls, midnight on Wednesday to show Tuesday's calls, midnight on Thursday to show Wednesday's calls, etc. If you're looking for the current day's calls, then you would obviously set this to say Monday, and then you would set this to be maybe a bit earlier in the day so that someone gets their reports. So let's say five o'clock in the afternoon. So in my example here, I'm gonna run this forever and then I'm gonna run it every day on Monday to Friday at 5 p.m. So this is when my report will run. By now following through my wizard by either clicking next or clicking on the arrow here, it will now take me to target data. So how much data do you want to have included in your report? So at the moment, it's saying I want a month. So every day it will run a month's worth of data. Again, displayed visually at the bottom of the screen. Okay, it will run on Monday, the 2nd of July, running for the whole of June's data. Now, because I've run it daily, what I may want is I may want it to run every one day. Okay. So I've set it as one day with an offset of minus one. So what this will mean is it will run the previous day. So on the 2nd of July, it will run it for the 1st of July. Now I set it to run at 5 p.m. The reason for this is because is I want the current day's worth of information. So by changing my offset to be zero, it will run it for the current day. So it will run on Monday the 2nd of July for the current day's worth of information. Now it could be I want it to run it every day for the current week, the current 24 hour period. So from that time going back 24 hours. And again, it will visually show you here what date period it's gonna run it for. So my schedule now, it's going to run every day at 5 p.m. for the last 24 hours worth of calls. So you'll see it will run from 6 until 5 there. Now, on some reports, you will get a batch option. What I will do, I will come back to what batch means in a few moments. For now, I'm just going to carry on scheduling this job as normal. So I'm just going to skip the batch one and come back to that in a few moments. So under my parameters in here, because we've already previously selected parameters from our report screen, 
these will be automatically applied. So you'll see in my directory items, it's already selected gold medal, level three and level four. If you do need to make any changes, let's say I want to include cool details, I can make changes at this point here. And I can click preview just to see how the report will look. So I'm now happy with my parameters. I can now move on to my next step of the wizard, which is my success notification. So this is who I'm going to email it to. So I will email it to this email address. I will give it a subject title. And I will give it a body of the email. Or and I can FTP this or and I can send it to a file location. File locations must be on the server or to a place that you can get access to. So these will normally be UNC paths that you would have access to. Your IT department can help you set up locations if you require them. So success notifications also can go to multiple people as well. Just use a semicolon to add on multiple people. Failure notifications are for if the job had a problem. So let's say that the email server was down, there was issues with the report not being able to generate. Maybe there was an issue with the Tiger server itself. In here, you will fill in the two email address here for who it will go to. Just put some notes in here though, so that people know what the error is, but it will say the job name here, so the department can investigate why it's failed. Finally, we come to delivery options. In here, we can choose if the file is emailed. In this case, yes, we would want it to be. And in which format we require the report to go in. So in this instance, we'll say PDF. And what would you like to call the file name? So by default, it will have report name here. To add in more default name templates, you click on the select option at the end here, and you can insert these by say, double clicking on report name. And maybe you could put some free text in here. Once you're happy with that, you can then go to the summary and then click save in the top right hand corner here. Once you've saved the report, you'll be able to see your reports available by going into your scheduler option. So to get to the scheduler, you go to the scheduler tile. You will have your report jobs here. You will then have a calendar view and this will show you when your next jobs are going to run. Here, there'll be a graphic indication of when the reports will run and when the next reports are going to be running. You can look at your jobs here by going to search and you'll be able to see all of your jobs that you have running. You can then go into your job here by clicking on the three lines on the left hand side. Seeing the information about the schedule of the job, the target data, if you've got any batch parameters, come to in a moment, any parameters, where the report will go to, the failure notification, how it will get delivered, a summary of the report, and then finally the executions. So since we started this job off, you'll see that it's gone through all of those reports and started emailing them off. If there are any issues with the reports, you may see some of these will be read or failed. If they're currently running, they will be stated as executing. That means that they're currently running that report. To find out more information about the report, you can either expand here if it's a batch job and see more information, or you can click on the three lines to find out more information about that report. If there were any errors, you can go into the error tab and pass this on to our support team where one of our support agents will be able to look at this for you. If there are any deliveries, it will say whether it was successfully delivered 
and at what time it was delivered. So importantly, in the details screen, you would hope the execution state is success and it delivered at least something. So I'm just going to go back into the job that we created earlier and go and look at batch scheduling. So we have an option here to batch schedule reports. So what does batch scheduling allow? Now batch scheduling is not available on uh, versions of Tiger Prism at the moment. You will need to speak to your account manager if you do not have this option to batch schedule. Batch scheduling is also only available on departmental reports as well. It's not available on all other reports. So anything that has departmental in the report name will be able to be batch scheduled. So what does batch scheduling allow us to do? Well, it allows us to send the same report to multiple people. So in here, you'll be able to select the batch process here. I think it's because I've already set this up as a normal job. It won't allow me. So let's create a new one. So let's choose the departmental cost summary. And I'm going to call this batch. And again, we're going to run this every month on the first of the month. For one month, the previous month's data, and in my batch, I'm going to batch process this job. Okay, and it's going to be on directory items, and I need to give this a name. So I'm going to say this is a monthly part mental bill, and I'm going to put something in the body of the email as well. So once I've filled in the message template, in my parameters, you will see that there is a change now. The directory item picker has now become batched directory items. So what this means is I can now choose who I want this to report to go to. So if I want to send it to everybody in Cardiographer, I can select everybody in Cardiographer by selecting all the items. And if I want it to go to everybody in gold medal, I can select all the child items and gold medal. So this report monthly will now be sent to Isabel, Alaya, Daniel, Harvey, Lucas, Libby, Madison, and Yasmin, and it will send them their own individual calls. Okay, so that level in the department. If there is a spelling mistake with the email address, you can come in here and change it. But I also want to send the department manager the list of all of their calls for all of their staff members underneath. And in here, I will then type in the email address of who that person is that needs to receive it. And this one here. So as long as I fill in an email address, that person will get all the calls for gold medal. And I will say I want to see level three and level four in that report. So this is going to look at sending Isabel, just Isabel's calls, because that's the level that's selected. And then test will get everything for cardiographer. Test will get everything for gold medal. But Aliyah will just get her calls. When I click OK, I will then follow the same wizard. So the success notification in this instance will be who receives it once the whole batch has gone through. So once those 10 reports have been sent, someone will get an alert to say, right, all 10 reports have been successfully sent. In the failure notification, this will be the person that gets the email to say maybe one of those reports has failed. Again, in our delivery option, we can choose our report type and name, etc. in here. Then under summary, we can just simply click save to save the report. One thing that you must note, though, in the batch scheduling in the directory items, if somebody leaves or moves department, you will need to come in here and update this. Or if somebody's uh, email address change, you'll need to manually come in here and update these email addresses. 
absolutely save that report. That then creates the batch scheduling for that report. So those 10 emails will be sent out. And you will see under here, all of the batch executions. The good news is that all of the schedulers are exactly the same. So let's say I want to schedule a widget job. In here, I can follow the exact same procedure. The wizard follows exactly the same. The only thing that's different is the selection at the beginning. So if I want to schedule a widget job, I can either choose a predefined widget, so I could select one that's already here, or I could create a new one. And all it will mean is I can then come into analytics and create a new widget to schedule. The only slight difference in the scheduler is with alert. When you're scheduling alerts, there is a slight difference in the target data. Again, it does follow the exact same rules of how often you want the alert to run. What the difference with alerts are is in the target data. So within the target data, you can get an alert to look at previous sets of data or you can get it to alert on new data only. So what this will mean is if you run the alert to run every 15 minutes to check on data, what it will do is it will mark any data it's already previously checked and then check any new data that's come. So if I say every 15 minutes, I wanna check to see if there's any calls that have been made to 999, for example, it will check any new calls that have come into the Tiger Prism system rather than checking all data. So if I've had 100 calls in the last 15 minutes, it will check those calls to see if there are any 999 calls. And then next time it runs, it will check any new calls that have come in either before those 100 calls, after those 100 calls, or between those 100 calls that haven't previously been checked. And again, you will then follow the success notification, etc. here. So finally, we need to look at a couple of settings. So under system settings in here is where you set the SMTP server. So if you have any questions around your SMTP server or you can't deliver emails, it's in the SMTP server that you'll set them up. If you edit the SMTP server, it may be that you need to fill in a username and password for your SMTP server. You also have this fallback email address and override email address. So fallback email address is for when there is no email address set on your account. So if you have an email address set on your account, it will send from your account email address the automated reports. If you don't have one, it will send from this address. Or if you set the override email address, it will always send every report from this particular email address. There is a send test email here. So if you are trying to configure your SMTP server, you can send test emails at this point. Thank you for watching. We hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and if there is anything else you would like to learn about Tiger Prism and its other modules, please visit www.tigercoms.com for more tutorials and information.